Here's what my experience has taught me about workout partners. I, obviously, we're always better off, no matter what your skill level is, finding someone you can beat on. That way you get to work your stuff. Find someone who's even with you. Then you set a goal that, hey, you know what? Within six weeks, I'm gonna beat this kid by five points. Find someone you cannot beat, maybe that can even uh, beat you badly, and set a goal to um, you know, only lose by two points to that wrestler. Or I'm gonna take him down or her down two times a practice and I'm not gonna get turned. You know, goals like that. But by having all three levels of partners, I think you're really gonna put yourself on a good path. And sure, some practices, you may only have kids who can beat on you. Just take your medicine. Some practices, especially in the off season, you may not have a lot of great partners. Just keep showing up. Don't look for a reason not to wrestle. You know, Josh McClure was a, what, three-timer, I guess, for us. Uh, national, um, fourth in the nation. In, in high school nationals, he's a starter now at University of North Carolina. So a big time D1 wrestler. He would show up and man, his workout partners at my Central Missouri room just weren't weren't there for him. He kept showing up though. I was like, dude, you would wrestle a chair. He goes, I gotta practice, so I'm like, good. Then you know what? He would drive down to St. Louis. We had the bad boy partners there, right? And you know, my Central Missouri room is better for my middle school and youth kids, but for him it wasn't. So a lot of it just depends on your age and weight. Just keep practicing, you know, so don't overanalyze this deal. Get on the mat and go, right? And uh, but ideally, it's best if you can have one of each of those three partners or all three of those, you know, all levels, every practice. Now, it does you no good. If you get an F in pre-algebra, it's doing you no good to train with uh, an, an AP calculus uh, student. You're like, well, I'm studying. I got a good study group. You're only as good as your study group. No, that, that, that makes no sense. You don't deserve, you're not getting anything out of that. You gotta learn how to get an A or B in algebra first. Wrestling's much the same way. So if you're throwing your kid just to the wolves and you're like, you, you don't even know that you're, you're supposed to sprawl in a circle. You're not supposed to sprawl, sprawl straight back. You've been doing it wrong for two years. I mean, you don't even know the basics. You keep tying up with your, a collar tie with your right hand. You can't shoot. Your right hand's the hand you score with. You're giving it to your opponent. No wonder you're not scoring. All right, so I can sit there and nitpick these kids and say, what are you and your parents worried about workout partners for? I would rather you have average partners, even, and even partners and even kids you can beat on. Let's just drill. So my stance is this. When you are lower skill level, I don't care if you're experienced. So, you know, um, I've had kids come to my camp, wrestled three years, they're dynamos. I've had kids wrestle eight, nine years, they just, uh, they haven't had the drill time. Uh, you know, who knows, maybe it's coaching, maybe, who knows what it is, but they need the technical work. So I would say, if you're not placing high and often in the state tournament, in your state, and you're not competing toe to toe at the national level. Don't worry about workout partners. You drill. Do live wrestle, because a lot of your wrestling comes from a feel. It's like a great boxer. A great boxer has a feel, a sixth sense. You need that in wrestling. So getting your head, getting slammed on your back and pinned 37 times, you never get a chance to roll. You never get a chance to get a feel. So you should actually avoid the hammer partners at least a few times a week and spend most of your time with the kids you can have success with because you want to develop the feel and the hips and it's called, I think, kinesthetic awareness. Knowing where you're, a, knowing where you're, I'm pulling into my gym, there's a big ditch there. Knowing where your opponent is at before they go there. Knowing where you're at before you go there. So the feel, but so that maybe 20% of your success comes from partners. But then once you become a monster, like in high school, you know, you're placing very high in the state. You're, you're placing very high. You might be ranked top 20 in the nation in high school. Now workout partners takes more priority. I would say 50%. Even a college national champion, I don't think that um, 
it, I don't think workout partners ever amount for more than 50% of your success. So if you're a lower skill level wrestler, don't go chasing workout partners. Get a home wrestling mat. Get a drill plan, all right? Um, write down your drill plan. Drill the hell out of it over and over and over three times a week. Get one or two partners that you can go even with or that you can beat. Work your stuff. Start to develop your skill. Then do that for a year or two. Then you start getting where maybe workout partners might start being, you know, 35% of, of your priority of your um, level of improvement. Then as you get to be very skilled as a middle school wrestler or as an elite high school wrestler, well sure you need fantastic workout partners and then it's still only 50-50. You have to be skilled in wrestling. So never ever ever um, think that you know workout partners is going to make you great. You have to have the personal skills. I remember this coach, he took over a, a Division One school and uh, they've actually were third in the NCAs uh, a while ago. Now they're top five or six. And one of my other coaching buddies, he was a Division One coach. Um, you know, he's been replaced since then, but he was a second in the world. So he was a great wrestler. He was like, that guy, all he does is drill. I've seen some of his practices. I've been hearing about it. He's not gonna make it and as a D1 coach. They just drill all the time. Well, one got fired and one has a, a third place trophy in Division One wrestling, right? That that's the approach. That that's that's the way. When I was a wrestler, I, I was my approach. I just kind of fell into it because me and my brother were twins. We are twins, and we fought all the time, and we had a home wrestling mat. We wrestled all the time, and we just got in fist fights. So we would go months without live wrestling because if we live wrestle, we'd get in fist fights, right? It was just kind of like a white trash affair, right? But it helped. Then I get to Oklahoma State. Guess what? Drill, 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 skill. I went to Oklahoma State just recently to watch a practice. It was mind-blowing how technical it was, right? And so some of you, you're, you're, we call that program hopping, practice partner chasing. No, you get your kid and you stay right where you're at. I'm going to be, I tell my kids, I go, we're going to become the best kids in America. People will be flying from California to train with us. The people who chase workout partners, I'm going to be great. You come chase me. I ain't chasing you. I'm going to stand right here. I'm getting skilled and great at wrestling. And if you take that approach, you're going to find that your wrestling career is, takes off because it is a skill sport and a drill sport. Now, workout partners are important. 20% of your success comes from workout partners when you're um, middle of the road and below. When you're high level and very extremely high level wrestling, it might be 50%. So you might you might need to worry about it a little bit in that those cases. But never, ever, ever avoid the fact that you need to have unbelievable drill time and skill time because that's 80% of it and it's at least 50% of up here. And up here at the highest level, if you start avoiding that drill time and skill time, your whole wrestling career will crash quickly. Remember, because you usually, when you're at the very top, there's not a whole lot a difference between, you might be the national champ, but the kid that got 19th place, you only beat in overtime, right? There's a lot much margin of error there. And you wanna make sure that you stay at the top. And you know, we have a video here about the importance of winning close matches. Not having close matches, we don't want to have close matches, but we know we're going to. So let's say this, if I win nine of my 12 close matches this year, I could be the national champ or state champ. If I lose nine of my very, very close matches this year, I may not make it out of districts, right? That is a fact. So the goal is to become elite. When you become elite, that upper tier level of athlete, we're gonna have close matches. Holding position, wrestling smart, developing with the emotions of wrestling. There's a bunch of videos in our playlist here about choke proofing your wrestling, etc. You know, all of these things just tips the scale and tips the odds in our favor so that we can win more of these close matches. But there's my stance on workout partners and uh, the importance of it and when to worry about it. Good luck.